All right, welcome. Yes, we're going to talk today about YouTube capturing Creator Studio, all YouTube, all day. All I'm day. I'm Corey Dahl from ESU8, and, and with me today. Lisa Pospisil from Norfolk Public Schools. All right, let's just get started. This self-paced learning is a uh, is something that I think has come about more, you know, even more recently. Mm -hmm. In the in the fact that technology is allowed for more self-paced learning, don't you think? Yeah, or another how, avenue for self-paced learning. Yeah, you know, and it's so easy. You know, a lot of you may have heard the term flip learning. You know, and and I think that's uh, driving a lot of this self-paced learning, where it's on demand whenever you want. That's exactly right. And the pause, rewind, play again. What that means is. I can watch a video that somebody's made. It may be a teacher, it may be a how-to video, it may be how, you know, whatever the case is. And I can pause it if I need to think about something or if I get interrupted. If yeah. I need to hear it again, I can rewind it. Yeah. How about that kid in class who just won't raise their hand and say, can you repeat that, please? Yeah, you know, it's, and, or if they get home and they realize, I don't quite understand that as well as I thought I did, they can always go back to your video and watch it. Right, and, and the important. availability of it 24 hours a day, seven days a yes. week. Whenever they want. Right, so when students are gone, in this case, they can still watch the video. You know, and the other important uh, thing for me when it comes to video with students is the ability to use more modalities in the learning process. You know, when you look at research, you'll see that learning pyramid. If I'm just talking at students, they're not going to recall 95% of what I say after two weeks. But as soon as I can add some visuals to it along with my words, I'm combining multiple modalities, which kind of creates a synergy in learning and allows students to connect images to what they're learning. So they're gonna retain it longer. And, and I really think we need to take more advantage of this technology tool, you know, but it wasn't always easy. Right, you're right, yeah. you're right. That you leads know? us into this next piece. Yeah. And we have over there the easy button with the, with the line through because no, it didn't I, used to be easy. And no. if you've been around a while, you will, will remember this process. So if, I wanted, right. <laughs> <clears throat> so if I wanted to record something, step one was typically you had to go to the library to find the camera, right? Right. So you go to the library and check out the camera. Yeah. So, so far, so good. But yeah. this never fails. Uh -huh. Because, you know, nobody's <clears throat> actually touched it for a week or two and right. the batteries are dead. Right, yeah, so yeah, yeah. And it might take a couple mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it was a, if you were planning on recording something, great. But I, I'm sometimes about this. Well, we want to record this right now. So now, you know, that moment's gone because you had to wait for a break. Yeah. You had to go to the library, you had to check it out, you had to charge the battery, and yeah. then so you go back to the library because there's no tape. No tape in the camera, or it was already recorded on, and you don't know if you can delete it because the last teacher may not have retrieved her footage down to her computer right. yet because she couldn't probably find the cables. Or in a 60 yeah. minute tape, you know, there's mm -hmm. two minutes left and yeah. you need 10 or yes. whatever the case is. Yes. So, so back, to back to the library, and you know, to, to get another tape. And yeah. Now you're finally ready to record the video. Yep. You're finally ready. And I do it and mm -hmm. the kids are great. Right. And it finally works out and you have it recorded, but then what? You have to do what in the olden yeah. days? What yeah. I call the olden days. You had to connect that camera to your computer, and right. what do you need to do that in that uh, time, yeah. Lisa? What the, do you need? The right cable. <clears throat> right, the cable or the cord. Yeah. And oh, you look in the bag for the cord, and there's no cord. No cord, or it's the wrong cord. I always would have a ton of those VCA cords. Oh. Right. So what do you do when you don't have the cord? Go back to the, back library. To the library. Back to the library. Yeah, and to find the cords, do an all call for the cord. Glad I'm wearing my pedometer today. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do an all call for the cord. Yeah. And finally, you get it off of your computer off of the camera and onto your computer. Which isn't always easy. Right. Oh, right. It, that's not easy either. And now you're finally going to be able to edit your footage, finally. Yeah. It's been quite a process yeah. so far. Or, or if you're too tired, you don't want to edit it. But right, so yeah, I think people it. used to not do this because of the process we're describing. It was yeah. it was just too much. Wasn't yeah. It? yeah, I was a diehard though, but no. Right. Most would not even go there. Right. Okay, next. When you're finally done, yeah. you gotta do what, Lisa? I get to export the movie to a CD, DVD, or a cassette, which VHS, VHS, yeah, VHS yeah. tape or cassette. Yeah. yeah. Um, the problem with this is that only a few people 
get to see it. Mm -hmm. So who gets to see the, view the video? Just a handful of people. You know, if I only make one DVD, I check it out to my kids and, you know, it probably gets lost along the way. So very few people, right? Or you should spend a lot of time on this already, shooting, downloading, mm -hmm. editing, and, and just if you make 10 yeah. copies, that's it. Yeah. Oh, and I've made those copies for teachers, and it's taken me a full day to make right. enough copies for teachers and right. DVDs. Yes, not you know? even to mention the time that it takes just, <laughs> just, just to copy it, take it out, and put a new one in. An hour. Right. right? So very few people get to see it. Yeah. That's the yeah. answer to that Just question. because it's too much work. <clears throat> well, things have changed. Very much. Thank God. And what has changed that, Lisa? I, I really think the mobile devices, you know, and, and like you said, mobile can be a computer or, you know, an iPad, an iPhone phone, an iPod, right. an Android, you know, whatever, whatever laptops, you have. laptops, laptops are mobile. And they things, are. So. And they usually have cameras on them, don't they? So this is the new yeah. process. Notice yeah. the green color, too. It's okay. Go. Now it's Go. Just yeah. take out your mobile yeah. device to yeah. shoot, and you're going to capture the video right on that device. Nothing special. The app is usually right there, and I just record. Right. 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 You didn't have to find a tape. Nope. And wonder if the tape has any space on it. And, and most so mobile devices have great battery life, and right. you're always charging it. So right, yeah. So now if it's you shoot edit. it, you edit right on the device. Right on the device. There's usually a program for that, right. and and some more sophisticated than others. But you have choice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great. And when you're done, now you're still on your device. So you mm -hmm. have the device with you. You shoot it. Mm -hmm. You edit it. Or, you know, you, when I say shoot it, you record it. You edit. Now you're out ready to upload the, yeah. the video. Yeah, as easy as that. No yeah. cables needed. And who gets to see this now? <laughs> Anyone you want. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. Right. You know, you have choice. And I, I think that's probably what scares people. We say the world, but it's if you choose. Okay? Right. You have control. And we're going to talk about that later on in, in the podcast. Right, right. Because uh, often people are scared or worried or concerned mm -hmm. about putting stuff up to yeah, YouTube. But you kids. can lock it down as much as you choose. Yep, exactly. So we'll, we'll definitely get to that. So if you have Google Plus, you have YouTube already. YouTube. Yeah, you, you know, have a channel. Yeah, and that's really my choice mm -hmm. for sharing. I think most people have access right. to YouTube, understand YouTube, and they do give us those controls. Although there are other services like Vimeo, right. which are just fine to use also. But to me, I think YouTube is a standard. It, it is, and, and they have a lot of cool things in there now that make creating your video even better, and that's what we're gonna share with you this, this second half, yeah. right? Right. So let's talk about capture. This is called YouTube capture, and I'm specifically talking about for an iOS or for an Apple device, like mm -hmm. an iPhone or an iPad or an iPad mini. So that's right. what we're talking about here. It's a free app. Free app. <clears throat> and it's just called capture or YouTube capture. And yes. it looks like that there. <clears throat> so some basics of shooting video before we get started. <laughs> Lisa, what do you see when you look at this? Now, I'm not going to play a video here, but this is a screenshot of a video. But yeah. what do you see? I see a lot of wasted space because somebody did not turn their device the now, right way. What do you way. mean wasted space? What are you talking wasted. about? Wasted. See these black areas on the left and right side? Mm -hmm. That is all wasted real estate on your film. And there is this is a specific yeah. diagnosed syndrome. It is. And what is it called? It, we diagnose it as vertical video syndrome right. or VVS. Do right. not... Do not right. attract VVS. It's bad. <laughs> so when you look at this, when you look at this here, this uh, TV here, <clears throat> this is the way TVs sit, right? So it goes this way, right? Not this way. You yeah. know, and you kind of look at that, and that mm -hmm. looks kind of funny. But how do most people hold their phones when they shoot video this way? And this is how it turns out on your TV that yeah. way. Even their iPads, mm -hmm. I see people holding it that long way. Right. So basically, since your TV sits this way, and I just love this, I found this down here, and I've you know, given credit where I found this. Here's the link to that. It's good digital citizenship, That is. Right? Good job. Um, since your TV sits this way, hold your phone this way. Yeah. You, know, please, you will thank yourself mm -hmm. years later when right. you have your kid video and you, you have the whole scene. It right. fills the screen. Right. So... Why I love mm -hmm. YouTube Capture. There are many things I love about it, but this is the first one, uh, the first reason why. Now, when I'm ready to use the Capture video and I've started and I'm holding my phone the wrong way, look what it tells us right here. It's saying what? What does this symbol, symbol tells mean? Tells me to rotate. Right. It's saying um, you can't start yet until you yeah. rotate your yeah. phone. So it helps us not be stupid. Right. YouTube people <laughs> who did this are geniuses <laughs> yeah, because they, are. they said, you know what? <laughs> We're not going to allow you to yeah. do it wrong. 
No. Got to do it right. Right, right. Okay. So this is just a close-up of it. Again, it just says. Oops, sorry. She's happy clicker. I am. So, so, <laughs> so this, this right here says, hey, rotate it. All right, yeah. next. Next. Now, when I get started, Lisa, what is it we're looking at right here? That is the big record button. You know, when we used to have cameras, you know, what button do we push? Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many on there. But this is so clean and simple. I like it. Right. I like to say, if, if I've never, if I haven't ever used this, mm -hmm. I could figure out where to push mm -hmm. to, to get it started. Yeah. And notice on this screen, they don't overwhelm me with a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty obvious right there. It is. Right. Once you've recorded. Okay. What's you, up here? Yeah, you may want to go look at your video you took. So it tells you how long that segment was and allows you to preview it if you click on it. Right, there. if you want to. Yeah. Right, after you're done. Or you can just simply click on this and then record more. Right, so. right. All right, very good. Now down here, what is it we're looking at with these two arrows on either side? You know, whenever you see those three lines, that means if you press and hold on it, you can grab it and move it. And so this allows you to clip either the left or right side. So if Trim I just... It put my fingers here and I just push it in like that. Now I've clipped off or taken off or edited just the beginning. Maybe there was some talking or we weren't quite ready yet to so yeah. take it off. Or maybe at the end, you know, um, you didn't need something. Yeah. yeah. It's basic. pretty basic though, yeah. isn't it? It is. You know, and what's nice is then I can go and add more clips to this too. And and I've, I've seen that in its recent updates. Right. Um, but next, this is the really kind of fun part for me because making the videos we want the easy button. We don't want kids to take a lot of time to make their mm -hmm. video creations, but you have the ability to do what next? Add music. Add music. And, and that, to me, is a is a big deal um, because a lot of people immediately, when they do something, they want a little bit of music in the background yeah. or whatever the case is. And it's amazing how much that adds to a video <laughs> creation. You know, yeah, and, and I would say that before in the past when I would do videos, that was just too much of a bother. I really rarely put it, but they make it really easy here right. because you can select either something from your device or or what I really like is the YouTube soundtrack. Um, and that's because it, it is copyright free, creative commons when it comes to YouTube soundtracks and really stick to that. But if you do have music you select from your right. device. Right. right. But before we go on to the select music from your device, mm -hmm. I like what you said about YouTube soundtracks. It's copyright free. It's good right. digital citizenship. They're mm -hmm. saying, we've created this for you. Mm -hmm. Please use it. You know, yeah. you have all the rights in the world. To, and you need to talk with us about your kids, uh, about mm -hmm. with your kids, um, about copyrights and things mm -hmm. like that. So right. I would recommend using this. But if you don't, if you do click on select something from your phone or your iPad, right. here's what you'll get. A little reminder about copyright, copyright. and yeah. digital citizenship. Yeah. The other thing that will happen if you put a song on there that is uh, copywritten is mm -hmm. that they will either take it down and send you kind of a nasty email or they'll put advertisement on it and you can't help it and you don't have control over what type of advertisement they put on your right. video. So sticking with those ones from YouTube and I find they have a big catalog you know, that can fit almost any mood. You really just, you don't need anything special. And it's growing too. It yeah, always changes it and, and improves. So when I'm done shooting the video and I've added music, it's really easy to just put a title in. I, I can obviously title it whatever I want. And then when I'm done, I can upload right. with that easy button right over there. Yep. And when you hit upload, it gives you a choice. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is where we said, who gets to see it? And this is probably what scares, I think, teachers and parents uh, about putting video up there on YouTube. The default's public. Right. Right? The default is public. It is public. And public want, means literally what? Anyone can see it and search for it. You know, so it is out there for anybody to see and use. What do you typically do then in school if you just don't want anyone to see it? Yeah. And what that's do you, what do you usually pick? I choose unlisted, you know, because that gives me a lot of freedom. I can take that link and I can put it on my school website where my parents go. Nobody else goes there and they can get the link. I can embed the video in there and anybody that clicks on it can find it. 
but it's not searchable on the YouTube Can channel. I take that link and like text it or email it to someone? Yes, yeah. I could. Yeah. yeah. Anybody. If that's what you wanted. Yeah. If I had an email list for my parents and grandparents and, you know, anyone I choose in the world. Now, this won't prevent someone from copying that link also and sending it on, but it does limit it. You have yeah. to admit it very yeah. much. It does. You know, and I, I just a quick story. Uh, my husband teaches over at Catholic and he has a foreign exchange student. And he had her do a video Christmas card and we did it as unlisted and she sent it to her family who sent it on to her family. And, and with that family, over 50 people have viewed that video, mm -hmm. but it was unlisted. Nobody else can see it. Right. Now private mm -hmm. only you can view, but then if it's only you, then you'd have to actually type in email addresses of specific right. people. Right. This is really the most secure but you also have to manage emails and have emails right. on there. So you really can lock it down. Notice the different levels of public where they just get to play mm -hmm. it. Here's a padlock, but it's it's open. Right. So it's kind of protected and then right. completely locked down based only on email address. Yeah. And if you made the mistake of making it private or public and you wanted it unlisted, later on we're going to show you where you can go change that so under I can video change manager. It at any time. Yeah, you can change it. Right. Makes it easy. You might have it as unlisted for a while mm -hmm. and then maybe when it's done you lock it down. Right. So, right. Okay. So next, now that was the mobile device. Right. So when I say mobile, in this case, I was talking Tablet. about, um, I was really talking about your iOS device, you know, your iPad mm -hmm. or your iPhone. But now what we're talking about is on a, a desktop computer or a laptop computer. Right, or right? a Chromebook. Or a Chromebook, yep. absolutely. It works on a Chromebook. Okay. And that is going right to the Creator Studio. Right. And uh, that is found when you have a YouTube account, like say if you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube channel once you go to it and create it the first time. Um, I, I will suggest that you don't use your personal Gmail account for your classroom YouTube or your school one if you want to keep those videos if you ever leave that school system. I would go ahead and just create a Gmail account for your classroom right. so that you have those videos there and, and they're yours to keep. But if you ever have students sign into it, they're not using your username or password. Okay, so when we log in, we come up here to our icon. All right, here's mine, and come down to Creator Studio. This is something that changed a year ago with YouTube, and they tried to put everything in kind of a suite. Right. Okay, and when you go to the Creator Studio, you have this dashboard up here. And we have our video manager community, where a lot of people with my channel, they'll send me messages, uh, my channel analytics so I can see who's actually viewed it and then down here to create and that's where we want to go uh, right now is show you how okay. easy it is to create on the internet now it used to be that the internet wasn't powerful enough in order for us to do this but let's go ahead and go on um, with the create you can record video using your webcam right right absolutely okay you know so this is not just for students and te it can be for teachers but to do that self-reflection of maybe a paper they did a speech sure. um, that they did create slideshows so I can take still pictures you know mm -hmm. uh, that I have available mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. and publish that as a video right. as well with transitions right. and things and I can edit my uploaded video mm -hmm. um, I really like this idea if you have students doing multiple projects or say you all went on a field trip and everybody had a device and they were taking video they upload it I can actually stitch those together right. into one video Using that class right account here version. yeah right in the browser I, I think it's really powerful very much you know so here we are at create just looking at that clean interface right right you know, here we have the video you chose. Right. I'm in video editor. The one thing that always messes me up is I click create and it's default is audio library. And so click down here to video editor, get this, and mm -hmm. it will come up with different videos that are in your channel that you've already uploaded. Sure. And you'll get that with the video camera right here. Right. Okay. And you just click on one of those to bring it down here to the timeline. Right. This is your timeline. And what's this blue line that goes up and down? It's called a playhead. playhead right? Yeah, you know, and, and in different programs, it may be a different color, but this playhead is really important mm -hmm. when it comes to editing your video, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so let's look a little bit more up here at the tools that we can add. Right. I keep forgetting right. to pick up that arrow, right? Right. But we, we said that you can create a slideshow, and this is where you can do it with the camera right here. I can add more pictures where YouTube just 
used to be video. Right. But I love the ability to make a slideshow. Sure. So it doesn't even have to be a video. I'm going to create a video from right. images, right? right? The other piece to it is just like in the, the, the capture. capture, you can search for. Now, there's, I, I believe there are many, many more. That you, sure. So, like in your example here, it's just cinematic, but you can change to other kinds. And there's so many. And notice the lengths, they're a minute, two minutes. You just spend some time shopping for them. They're free. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're copyright free as well. Yep. So you have the choice to add music here. Yep. Use it. Notice too that the difference between the iOS device, uh, you typically mobile devices aren't as powerful as far as editing and things. Yeah. So now again, we're on the computer and mm -hmm. notice all the different choices like right. this. Lots of transitions. Yeah. Transition. So if you have pictures or if you have multiple videos, you can add a number of different transitions, just like in iMovie. Right, it makes right. it really easy. Can't believe this is all online. The other thing that's really nice is you can add some narration with text. Mm -hmm. You know, and they just have different places that you can put it. Um, but the text is really kind of nice when it comes to creating and adding a little more depth right. or emphasis sure. to a part of a video. Sure. So now that you're done, well, you're done and you want to go back and edit something that's already been published. Can I do that? It's yeah. already been shared. It's out there. Can I still go back to it? Yeah. You know, like we said, if you m made a mistake and made it public instead of unlisted, that's where you need to head to your video manager with the Creator Studio. And if you click over here on video, mm -hmm. all your videos that you have uploaded will be listed here. Okay. Right. And right. you can just click on it or you can click right here on edit. Right. When you click on edit, you're going to be taken to this screen where first you see your video. Right. And then I have my thumbnails. Now, a lot of times, you know, YouTube just randomly chooses that first picture that you see. Right. Right. In the video, you get to choose, you know, and what I really like now is they've added this custom thumbnail. So let's just say I, I want a picture of my class there. You right. know, I can put that in there. Right. I can also come down here. This is some basic information, add a little description. But take a look right here where it says public. Right. Uh oh, I made that mistake. I want to make it unlisted. That's we'll where change you change it. it. Sure. It's right in videos, edit, come here and change it. Now, if we change it to uh, unlisted, mm -hmm. where is the link on this screen? Right. There's a share link. Right there. You can right. get it there. And you can even get it if you go to the video itself. Right, right. Yeah. And you just copy this and share it. Right. And real easy to embed into like Google Sites or Weebly site. Sure. It, it makes it great. Okay. Right. Also shows some of the uh, different analytics for the video, how many people have watched it, if they've liked it. Uh, that's the place to go. Now, I, I do want to point out advanced settings. This is where you go if you don't want people to make comments. Right. You know, and I've had that problem with some of my school videos, I have inappropriate comments. So if I, I don't even want to mess with that, I can go into advanced settings and turn that off. That. Right. And coming up here, this is where we're going to take you through the next piece that if I'm in an, a video already and I want to do some other sure. editing, we're going to head over to enhancements, right? Okay. Yep. Okay, so mm -hmm. here we are. Oh, we oh we skipped that one, oh, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. yeah, but you can do some enhancements with enhancements some audio. Means Stuff with, uh, you can change the color, yeah. you can make it black and white. We just chose to not show a lot of those because right. typically they're not used. But just know that they're there mm -hmm. and you just by clicking on it. It's, yeah. it's self-explanatory. Yeah. But annotations really add yeah. something. Now, this is different to me than earlier we were talking about adding text. Right. Right? It's mm -hmm. more like a title page, mm -hmm. you know, or something. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about something here and you click on annotations, then you can add a little call out there. And you can go over here to the right and choose your speech bubble and the color of it. And so maybe right when you're talking about something, you have this little flash of a yeah. of a little, and people tend to go and, and they look at that mm -hmm. when it shows up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and there's a lot of times when I'll make a video and I'll upload it, mm -hmm. and maybe I forgot to say something. You know, I found this really handy. Just go put a speech bubble in it and it calls attention to it and you're done. Right. So, right. so for instance, it's I um I forgot to tell you to hit save or something. Yeah. You could just yeah. quickly, even though you didn't say it in your recording, mm -hmm. you can say, "Hey, remember to save when you're done," yeah. or yep. or turn it into Mrs. Phosphor Show or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Works yeah. well. It does. And then you just republish it once you get done. It will ask if you want to make a new one or just replace it. Just update sure. it. Sure. Very good. 
So how about planned absence? If a teacher needs to be gone and uh, and they, they know they're going to be gone, right? Right. And, or maybe it's a, you know, it's a sick day and you have a few minutes, just you want to make a quick video to tell the students what it is they're supposed to do. Right. This is why this YouTube Creator Studio is awesome. Mm -hmm. Whether it's whether it's the capture on the device right. or it's the YouTube Studio, it's just as simple as clicking upload, and then you get choices here on the right. You can just record from using the camera on your computer, mm -hmm. um, a, a slideshow, or whatever the case is. It's right. Very, and then look at here. Right again, there's a public. Remember that's the default, right. so yeah. I can immediately change this mm -hmm. before I've even started. Mm -hmm. Right. So more than one place to do that. More than one place. And if you're using the webcam, that's as a teacher, if you're giving instructions to your students, you know, you're going to get this message. And all you want to do is say, allow it to use it, not deny. And if you don't want to have to click it all the time, just click on that, Read remember me. my choice of yeah. allow. Yeah. And then that'll, it's just basically saying, hey, can we have permission to use your camera? Right. And you're giving the computer and YouTube permission. So if I haven't ever used this again, that red button right down there at the right beginning there. is pretty self-explanatory about recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just kind of give the introduction, click upload, send the link to the sub, right. or sometimes the secretary, you know, whoever right. uh, has the ability to go to your classroom right. and upload that video. Or if you're using well. YouTube class, or not YouTube classroom, ah. Google classroom, yeah. sorry. You can now send this link to Google classroom. Yeah. The kids already have their assignment. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just an option. Yeah. Well, and, and I think it's a nice connection to make with right. your students too. Right? Plus, they think you're really techie if you do that, right? right. Exactly. Pretty impressed. So we've given you YouTube Capture and Creator Studio mm -hmm. as uh, ways to quickly uh, shoot video, mm -hmm. edit video, and upload video sure. and share it. Yeah. And they're free. They're right? free. You know, and, and I hope that we've taken away some of your fear with using video in the classroom, I think it's really an important step that all teachers today need to make because mm -hmm. our kids, that's that's their future. That's how they're going to communicate is with sight and sound, okay? Yeah. And, and I think just jump into it, play with it a little bit. Um, I don't think you'll be sorry, right. okay? So thanks for joining us. You bet, thank yeah. you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at the service unit. Yeah. Or Lisa, if you're part of the Norfolk yeah. Public Schools, or even not, yeah, you know, she'll I, answer. I, yeah, I try. And I thank, try. Thank you, Lisa, right. for joining me today. Sounds great. Thank you.